All right. What's up? So, gaming rig is back in order. So is the the actual streaming setup. So, back again and it might be some technical difficulties as I get everything back in order, but by and large, I think we're about ready to go and everything set up again. Cool. So today we have to start it all off just to see if everything works out. Well, I'm going to do some react videos. I meant to do this as soon as Sirius pumped this out, but but my computer broke, so I couldn't actually react to the one I wanted to react to, which was his construction overhaul video. That's the one here on the far right plane. So I'm going to react to that. I've seen it one time. And then after that, we're going to, I'm going to read Rel's letter. I've read that already. Uh, just kind of my thoughts on it after seeing Sirius's video. And then we're going to finish off with Zealous's video that came out about a week ago, his reaction to Rails changes. I haven't seen that one yet, so I'm going to gonna react to all of it in real time. I am Connery NC. I'm main battle tank player and also main construction. So those two things I spend almost all my planet side time doing. Um, usually in a vanguard lately i've been, been doing a lot of colossus videos but almost always an engineer and times i'm not an engineer i'm normally in a max or in a light assault infiltrator trying to build my base up so it's almost always in support of usually tanking or constructing so needless to say this update this coming update for construction is very interesting to me and i'm gonna go ahead and crack open a, a drink while I'm at it. It's a spiked lemonade, so let's try and get this underway. Tons of technical difficulties that have cropped up. So, Let's do Hello, first soldiers. My Sirius. name is Commander Sirius. Welcome back. A few months back, I made a video suggesting an overhaul of the construction system. It had mixed responses, but the best part was a lot of discussion. I'm going to clarify some of my thoughts, look at what the community had to say, and try to figure out where Daybreak Games should take it from here. Let's dive in. I'll see you planet side, soldiers. Okay. Construction is a hotter topic than you might expect. After sure. releasing the video, I got plenty of browser down somewhat. Okay, cool. Let's do it. Just excited to gauge the conversation and a lot of hate messages, including this construction main that thought the flail should be more powerful. In fact, so powerful, it should not be restricted by no construction zone. So it literally could attack anywhere on the map and it would be so powerful force players away from the standard lattice to have to go kill them that is the flails to create battles at the construction bases that's now, like the, the last old thing router I think system any planet man or planet woman needs is more hesh in their lives let alone the hesh to the scale of the flail the, the flail though has a big big inhibitor and that is the no deploy zone around every base so flails are very niche I use them as much as I can, but ultimately when you're doing base support, flails are hard unless, I mean, they, they can't, they have a minimum range, so they can't shoot them right next to you. Also, they have a maximum range, which is 600 meters, and the no deploys around bases are huge. So it it's kind of, in my mind, OBE when it comes to flails, they're, they're very niche. You can get people on straight bridges. You can get people on narrow passageways. Sometimes you can get them in open fields. I had a, I had a thing like that last month when I was building a big old base on Esamir. And ultimately, I mean, I don't, 
even if they had unlimited range, I, I don't know. They might be more annoying, yeah, but ultimately, they're still very niche. You can't hit a base with it. Or much outside of a base. So Sierra and, and Sirius are chatting to each other. Yeah, okay, let's keep going. Well, whatever, here, we're at the brainstorming stage, so let's hear them all. Let me so know here, that. here is Sirius as an infill. I'm willing, I'm guessing if I remember correctly, that's a, that's a flail targeting dart. So he's probably going to demonstrate how he can use this thing. Well, if you notice, he's in the red zone right now in his mini map, looking out into beyond the no deploy. So, and, and you can see his flail reticule right there. That's where he probably flailed last. So as you can tell, I mean, you've, you've got that whole road right there that's protected. You can't flail that. That's what I mean. Very niche. Down in the comments if that's a good or a bad way to create more fights at construction bases. Now, before we get into this, I want to make it clear that I have spent a lot of time with construction. No, I don't have my builder title yet. I have. I don't either, but I'm about to about another 10 minutes of wall repairing to do i've been working on finalizing that but i just didn't want this bit you see how we just shot it let's stop right there thing to do i've been working on finalizing that look at that that's not the flail's fault if you can't tell what that is that is a collection of nc sunderers looks like the gia it is the gia that's not the flail's fault if this goes through and he kills all the Sunders, that's their fault for cl for clumping up. First of all, you can see the flail marker. It's a flail. Uh, it's, uh, it's a smoke. You can see it for about, what, five, ten seconds? Enough time for you to see it and get out of the way. It takes about 12 seconds for a flail impact to hit from dart to impact. So you have time to get out of the way. It's just, are you paying attention? And if you're not, then that's part of the game. You lose. But I Let's just didn't happens. want this video to wait I don't any this longer, problem. so I'm going to move forward. Expect me to have the title within the week, because I think that's where some of the hate so they're comes standing from. There. They're about to get annihilated. I think I haven't spent a lot of time with. There we go. So I don't boom, really boom, understand boom, boom. what builders are up against, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. Not the flail's that's fault. That's just not the case. What I do see happens is builders get very laser focused on creating their fortresses and don't spend a lot of time playing armor, playing infantry at a high level playing infantry at a high level and don't see some of the negative and playing very laser focused on creating their fortresses and don't spend a lot of True. time playing armor playing infantry at a high level well and don't i mean construction is very young compared to the rest of the game so unless you just joined the past three or four years i doubt that you be you didn't begun began as a as a construction person you began as something else my minor thing i disagree with him there but i think he's gonna arrive at, arrive at a pretty reasonable larger point don't see some of the negative impacts of construction only see the fun parts of it that <laughs> up for debate but construction is so niche there's so few of us that sometimes it can be very not fun but i think you'll probably get into that that is the fun parts for them because to me right here this is very one-sided gameplay Sure, it's fun for me just mauling the Sunderer column. Yeah, but come on. I mean, you know that if you're getting flailed, you know it can't be more than 600 meters away if you want to find it and kill it. You know the targeter is either in a Valk flying above you or if you can't see them in infill, not more than, I don't know, 500 meters, 400 meters. And if, I don't know. And if you're grouped up like that and you get destroyed after seeing the flail, I mean, that's not the flailer's fault. It's not the flail's fault. You're literally asking for it, in my opinion. I'm a tanker too. So I know what the, the being the receiving end looks like. Keep maneuvering, fire and maneuver. Grouping up like that's a, usually a bad idea. Ah. Tons of certs, but I see absolutely nothing fun for them. You have to well, that's because they're not paying attention. Minor. Remember, the flail is exceptionally bad at rendering where it's landing. 
In fact, yeah, I agree. There could be some work done on the rendering of it. Sometimes you don't see the 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 mortar shells come down. If you're looking far away, you can usually see it go up. Sometimes you can see it high in the sky, uh, but you can almost always see the the smoke at least for five seconds. Usually, in fact, it might even be to the extent that it's bugged right now. It does green it might smoke be where the flail is going to land about 10 seconds before, but it's rare to see the targeting reticle on the mini map on your map these days. But I'm not convinced that that's what you're supposed to see. I mean, can anyone confirm that? Are you supposed to see the targeting reticle reticle on your mini map enemies? That'd be weird. I wouldn't be in favor of that. So not only is it hard to see it coming in, there's zero counterplay other than drive into a no construction zone or just drive out of the way the radius of a flail is not that big no it's it's probably what 10 meters 10 20 meters maybe maybe and if you're in a vehicle but oh, come on if you're in an infantry blob outside of no deploy what are you doing why aren't you in a base I, I don't know. Like I said, it seems pretty niche. Which you don't know where they are unless you're driving an ant or have a tool out. Obviously, you could go towards a base because you'd expect one to be around it. Yeah. No, 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 not expect. You have to have one around there. You can't, uh, you can't no silo a flail like you can a tower. You've, you have to put a flail within 500 meters of the of a silo and it has to have an alarm an alarm uh, a targeting module all three things have to be true yeah anyways the bottom line of my video was really changing the purpose of construction in planet side too okay and that meant i i didn't i don't remember watching it it might have been a long time ago but i'll just i'll take his word for it neutering a lot of its offensive capabilities i agree with that the offensive capabilities seemed like uh, kind of like a stopgap, like a give me for kind of the, the big glaring things about it, like the big ass no deploy zone for it to where I'm I'm niche. But when I am niche, I can excel like with the flail, like my offensive. But if you take that away and you take away like the no deploy, then I'm, I'm relevant to the fight and I don't really need to flail everything. So I agree with them. If you can neuter the offensive and bolster the more relevancy for the defensive, that's cool. Neutering what the flail could do, neutering the damage of orbital strikes, neutering the passive damage. I try, I spent a whole play session once just trying to orbital strike and it's hard. That is not easy. First of all, it takes a while for it to recharge. There is a minimum. But unless you're in that minimum, I think it's like 200 meters minimum, 300. And you have to be 200 meters away from, excuse me, away from the orbital strike for it to engage when you put down a dart. That was a big one for me because 200 meters is a long, long ways away. Someone attacking your base, you can't orbital strike. I mean, you'd be orbital striking your base, but sometimes that would be a good idea. Honestly, your modules would survive more than they would in most cases. In any case, yeah, the orbital strike is not overly user intuitive. You have to figure it out. It's very particular. Image of pain fields and AI turrets. And I got to say, those are the only parts construction mains heard. They didn't really hear or process the buffs I was giving it. Okay. But as a player that's been on the receiving end of all this, I got to tell you, this just, it's not good gameplay what you're watching here. Thank you. I mean, again, I already went over it. Just don't have a real chance to fight back against me. And it you do, though. You know they can't be more than six, you know those modules can't be more than 600 meters away. And if you're out in the open like that, what are you doing anyways? Find it, kill it. And it takes what, 20 seconds to reload? I mean, it's it's not a fat, you can't like Gatling gun these flails. 
It doesn't work like that. It's a long recharge. And it further encourages players to just stay in the safety of bases and not initiate these open field fights for fear of getting relentlessly flailed. Is that really a thing? Anybody can tell me in the chat. Are you really worried about flails that much? Because I'm telling you, I've, I've, I've optimized some flails, but uh, nothing ever like that. I never got the sense anyone was afraid of my flails like that. I don't know. Let me know. So anyways, I made that video, and then a few months after that, Rel took a look at construction and started to make some tweaks. Okay, what do you do? E oh, right, the EMP Spire. I mean, I'm kind of mixed about it. it. It it was one of the main things I needed to keep my base healthy. It's very hard to defend a base by yourself, and most of the time you're building a base by yourself. There just aren't enough construction players. So, you know, it being an EMP Spire now is whatever. The thing that really hurt was the decrease in the range. The range going to is like so minuscule that it it's I don't know. Sometimes I don't even build it. Uh, it used to be helpful. Now it's just kind of like if I have time for it. Suppress the shields, sure. I love converting AI module that buffs the effectiveness of the turrets. Oh, it removes turret automation altogether oh wait i think he reversed that one because there's still automation today the flow on the glaive no longer require this module to function they're talking about the targeting module and then the bunch of damage buffs and decreases in resistance types like the direction he was going with all of them the challenge was it was mostly the nerfs and the changes i'm proposing I'm grab me another really drink. be done in This time it's strawberry. Iterations. He ended up not moving forward with all the changes because of community outcry. Quick reminder that the devs really- I would substitute the word outcry for feedback. The veteran PS2 community has always been rather intense with its words. So that that's usually been a thing since Higby era. But Rail did something I thought was really stand up. He asked for feedback. I think it was via Twitter and Reddit, maybe. But I remember responding to him via Twitter. And it seemed like he actually took some of that into account, which was stand up. I, I really appreciated that when he did that. Really do listen to you. I know there's a lot of people that don't feel he does. like that after the I agree with that. cat helmet thing. I'm going to explain later why that's a different situation, but reminder this is just one of the many situations where the players said hey we want this and the devs listened and changed what they were going to do based on that feedback anyway so the first one was rel was going to nerf the pain spire and he reeled that back to just updating the visuals so you know exactly where the pain field is and then he was going to nerf ai modules i agree with that change i think it's good that people know where it is that, that's fine before it was kind of chaotic even i didn't know where it was so I just kind of put it down in like a triangular format, hoping that it would hit the whole overlap area. It usually worked, but I like that I can see it now. I don't care if the enemy sees it. The thing that hurt was, you know, the reduction of, of the range. That was the most painful thing. And that nerf did not make it to live. And he was going to nerf the flail, and that nerf did not make it to live. Oh, okay. One buff to construction that I'm very happy with is stalker cloak infiltrators infiltrators in general can no longer carry cordium bombs so anyways that was a good one made it to live regarding i really like that one extremely well balanced that helps out big very time. minor but i do hope when rel and the developers have time they revisit construction in a very holistic manner the changes i'm proposing completely change the role of construction and planet side okay so it can't be iterated there it has to be done all in one fell swoop go on but as I go through it and clarify some things for those people that were upset and worried about it, I want to start all the way at the beginning. Why am I going after construction? I feel like there's a lot of builders that are like, just leave us alone. We are happily flailing open field by the next next one. Base you move forward 100 meters. Set something up. Move really forward another 200 meters. Set something up. You move across the map. Here's why, guys. I am bored to tears of the maps we play in Planetside. Like, guys, 
we have fought and attacked. I don't agree. I see his point. The maps are the maps, but they're huge, though. They're huge maps. Very, very big. You can do a lot. Those maps. Plant a million times. We have fought on our tower base a million times. We have fought True. on Biolab a million times. True, Why? but Biolabs aren't as big anymore. Not near as big anymore. They used to be a big part of the game. Huge Helm's Deep type stuff. You would defend it all alert. Not anymore, though. Fights flow back and forth a little bit. You know that I have a whole other spiel on how to improve the battle flow. I've seen the that. The reality is the fights I like, end up I like his pretty thoughts. much the same few maps. You got your tech plant map, you got your biolab map, you got your amp station map, you got your tower map. And then the other maps are just a mixture of the same buildings. The L building, the powerhouse, the triple stack, etc. Fun fact, you can look Normal at the stats on, guess and see just how many large outpost defense ribbons you have. You might be shocked. So one of the arguments has been, hey, we need to build better bases. Bases that protect infantry from the air to ground in the Hesh spam. Bases that allow the attackers to attack from different angles. Bases that allow the defenders to flank. So, after all that fuss, what do we get? The containment facility. It's got multiple tiers of objectives. At least originally, there were SEU spawn points up top. There was the Tempest control room down below. Multiple spawns for attackers and defenders. Multiple ways of attack. And after all this time and energy and this beautiful base was created, people generally complain about them. <laughs> yeah. I still don't know my way around that thing. I get lost all the time. The runtime. But I don't dislike it. I'm glad they inserted it. It's interesting. Those are huge. The places are a fortress. You either have to have a skill disparity or a population disparity to take them. And while the idea of crawling through vents has been brought up a million times, it kind of sucks having to move around at crouch speed. <laughs> True. I feel like Snape. Uh, not Snape. Uh, all Metal Gear Solid Snake. But, you know, it's interesting. It's unique. I can't remember the last time I even got an event at the containment facility. So, they try to freshen up the play by adding a new base. Within a week, everybody hates them and is tired and bored of them. Oh, but all... Normal veteran feedback. Especially someone who plays the game for hours on end in a persistent universe. Oh no, serious, really, Daybreak Games just did a bad job. They didn't do a good base. They don't have good devs. It's this. I'm I'm not so harsh on the devs for their base design. I um I've talked with Aflict about it quite a bit. And and Lex as well. And base design, I I get the perspective that it can really make or break and enjoy the enjoyment factor and all that. I, it's, I don't know. It's just not as significant to me. And it might be because I don't. I'm a Vanguard player, so. I don't know. I just. There's gonna be a base design somehow, some way. It's just the game. Person's fault, that person's fault. Really, if they just did a good base, a smaller base where you didn't have to run so much, it would be better. Great. So let's go fight at an interlink facility. It's tight, it's compact, it's new, it's fresh. I like what he's doing here. He's he's following a train of thought. That, okay, you don't like this? How about this? Oh, you don't like that either? How about this? No? This? No? This? Well, then what do you want? I, that's exactly my thoughts on base design, too. The devs do what they do with the time they have. I think they've been doing it uh, with the good, good faith. So, yeah, I applaud them. Containment facilities are too big. There's too much runtime. There's too many events. There's too much going on. Everyone's complaining that the biolabs on Esmir got taken away. Let's try it again. Let's do another base. This time it's smaller. It's tighter. We still have protection from the air. There's not as much runtime. Spawns can be close. There's shielded garages for the Sunderers. And inevitably, what is everyone going to hate? Well, you're going to end up trapped in the spawn room with C4 and frags getting thrown over the wall. Yeah. Making the case for there's no perfect base design. It just is what it is. Yeah, like uh, I just did a interview with Planetside Central and the very last question was, what would you recommend the devs? Focus on server performance. Yeah, make it make the game run well. The rest of it, I think, takes care of itself. The, the game is already massive. The devs, you, you have your work cut out for you in that regard. And I think you rightfully deserve the credit there.
lobbed at you kind of just make the game run well yeah constantly and it's either way too easy to defend or you are crammed into your spawn room and can't even get out guys there is no winning the devs can either try to pick that. out a new base every two weeks or we've got to find a different solution let's move on while we watch me get c4 to death repeatedly and you know what that solution is i've called it many times remove the no deploy from construction you can keep it for the flails and all the offensive stuff but let me build walls and modules inside a base do you know how cool i can make any base at that point keep the same collision mechanics i can't build a bunker in there in every spot but if i can fit a bunker somewhere you better believe i should be able to do it that would make the base cool you i think i think a lot of people would enjoy that it would it would instantly make every base creative and unique because there's some builder in there thinking about oh i should put a blast wall this way oh wait no i should put a luma fiber this way it's what world is your oyster so guys i love planet side and i think the fact that it's open world agreed is a benefit Sitting agreed for an arena or battle royale match to start is not fun compared to the massive action of planet side if you yep know. i've written about this quite a bit in my gaming article writing days i called it match-based games versus mmos and the the difference between the two and, and why i like mmo the fact that it's mmo fps yeah very cool well how to stay in it but for all of its open worldness it gets extremely extremely repetitive and i truly hmm. believe that construction is the way to save it go on construction can make indar feel new and different every single time it opens up agreed there's a few ways to do this one is make bases relevant in the field and i don't really think this is possible the ideas have been brought up are things like mine the hex lattice hybrid a massive technical undertaking the game would be dead before they could ever get it released other people have suggested the idea of letting a base put down a control point so that they could effectively create a lattice link between bases sounds very cool but again just the technical hurdles just sound mind-boggling this idea came up a few times in my youtube video i think vindicor has an idea along those lines on his page but if a lattice link was created and the attackers actually had to control that point to move forward that would force them to stop at the construction have the open field fight rather than just fly over the top of them but let's say we Under don't get that construction to that the one. attackers actually had to control that point to move forward that would force them to stop at the construction have the open field fight rather than just fly over the top of it okay he's talking like burgess overlook the sort of bases that have just a point you can build around excuse me you can build around them i don't think you can actually build in burgess but i i think i get where he's coming from on that one you you have a base you can do construction the one above howling pass on endar and you can make that base unique eh yeah okay but let's it, it's a lot of work to build a base though i don't know if you all realize if you're not a construction player even just by myself even with another player it takes a bit of planning uh, it's just not it's it's not a um, an automatic thing let's say we don't get that the lattice is what it is they don't have the resources to ever touch it again the next thing we can do is start shrinking construction zones around bases and allow people to modify the bases. Yes. Yes. That. Fortify the perimeter. Make a change. Allow constructors to throw down ramps or jump pads like the Lattice Hall You know how cool it would be if I could throw down a ramp on a wall? That'd be awesome. Previously. To create new access points to tech plants. Allow the defenders to set up new pill. Yeah, because the, the way amps and techs work nowadays, I kind of funnel you into this really confined space. If I can put a ramp next to a wall on a hill where, I don't know, a vanguard could catapult over it and then land inside the middle of the building, it won't survive very long because it's close quarters. I get C4 or it'd flip, but it'd be cool. It'd still be funny. You even get a sunder in there. Hill boxes and walls is a different way to defend them. Allow attackers to put down Elysium spawn tubes close to a tech plant so that they have a hard spawn that one's controversial 
because that would essentially make it a sunder and or a router, I would say. Mm, OK, give it a go and see what happens. One idea that I keep seeing come up is people wanting the pillbox to come with an Elysium spawn tube in it. I love how he's using the shoot on the on the Corsair. <laughs> That's actually pretty funny. The spawn tube doesn't break until the pillbox breaks, thereby creating an actual durable spawn for the attackers. The Sundays sure aren't it. Galaxy sure aren't it. Router sure aren't it. Really interesting idea to allow attackers to move in. And Routers can be though, and they used to be big time back when they had no minimum range or maximum range. They used to be a much bigger deal. And they were weak, so when you found them, you could kill them pretty easily, but they did open up some new interesting avenues. And actually create a fortified spawn to really work from and try to attack some of these difficult bases. So anyway, soldiers, as someone that has played planet side in all aspects, in air, on ground, in vehicles, in construction, I am without a doubt not a master of any of them. Osher, you, you see he's playing on Osher right now. Osher has the most con constructive, expansive type thing. A lot of construction players, and as you as you heard when I was on the panel with Zealous and, and Madden and, and all of them, a lot of them liked Osher because you could build more. But you, Osher is fairly universally hated in my in what I've seen. Um, not probably because of construction, but because of other reasons. But ultimately, Osher is probably a good test case for the devs. If they like what they see on Osher in terms of building, I think they should replicate that across the rest of the game too. I am certainly a jack of all trades is master of none, but certainly better than master of one. The most exhilarating moments in planets it's a nice quote said that I have are not the umpteenth power fight. Sure, I'll take that action over nothing, but there are ways to create some of the best parts of planet side that will keep it fresh and drawing more players in. Now, let's say you've stayed with me this far. You know, like serious 10 years in. I'm still with I'm you. Bored. I'm doing redeploy side galaxy drops. I'm bored of farming towers. We've done it. We've tried it. I am. I'm playing other games right now because after I'm just, I'm just 10 years of the game, game everyone's game probably done everything. So I will. I will entertain this idea of making construction a more relevant part of it. Let's move it away from just that little orbital strike base tucked over in the corner. If you've made it that far, we now have to make construction palatable for everyone. And that's what my construction overhaul is all about. Changing it from this vehicle for stalker cloaks with targeting devices to interact with the battles, to allow creators, constructors, builders actually shape the map of planet side. And that starts with dealing with things like AI turrets. The general player base is not gonna be up for trying to solve dealing with these things. Let people pull from vehicle pads or air terminals using their nanites, because so often you walk up to a base that has restricted access and all of a sudden you can't do anything in it. I mentioned this Surin Zealous' thing. One of the main difficulties of being a construction player is base management. Talked about it at length there. I won't go too much into it here, but not knowing who I'm sharing with, how I can share. The change access thing does very little for me to know how it is that people can interact with my base. It, it's, it's overly difficult. So uh, my big recommendation, please fix base management. Make it more clear who I'm sharing with. Because you don't have Cordium or an Ant. Allowing Nanite pulls will allow everyone to really interact with these bases. And you've got to deal with a flail. Right now, the no construction zone is so necessary to curb the power of the flail. Got I agree with that. If you took away no, con no deploy zone for a flail, it would be chaos. Yeah, don't do that. Please don't do that. That would be over pendulum swinging and, and the correction. Uh, if I can flail a base, it's over. <laughs> I could sit on a mountaintop. I could do a flyby gal. It would be a uh, flyby, uh, flyby valk. It, it would be bad. Very, especially glaives. You set up like seven or so glaives surrounding a base and just auto repeat a glaive. A glaive doesn't do a ton of damage, but if you get a bunch of them going at the same time, shields are gone for the enemy completely. And some of them, uh, many of them will die from just random direct hits. It's don't do that. Don't take away the no deploy for flail and glaive. Way over correction. You gotta deal with how the target zones don't really render. 
and you've got to deal with their massive damage output, commonly going through structures. If you're under a bridge, it'll blow you up through it. FYI, there is an exploit out there of how to glaive a base. It's not difficult to figure out. F flailing a base is is exploit right now too. It's a lot harder. Uh, I wouldn't be worried about it because if, of how difficult it was to actually do it. Um, I could only do it on a tech plant and, and very under very, very specific conditions. But the glaive is much easier. You just have to know some things uh, and then you can just glaive all day long. And because it just auto repeats, it's just you have instant, instant glaive the whole time. So, uh, yeah, that that's already chaotic if you do that. Bruh, you are <laughs> what? No, man, I'm 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 full blooded American. Yeah. Um, sometimes if you're in a sunder garage, it'll blow you up through it if you hit it correctly. So I realize all the construction mains are gonna hear me taking away all of their tools, all of their power, all of their utility. But then we want to bring things back. I want to add more buildings that they can place. I would love it if they could place a triple stack and give it some sort of logistic benefit. Does it increase tanks' hit points by 10% within a 400 meter radius? I don't know. You know, start dreaming sure. what construction bases He's can do, balling. what logistics they can bring to strengthen your forces. Make it about that. Make it about setting up attacks that stick, that don't end the moment a drifter LA finds the one Sundra. So guys, that's what I'm all about regarding construction. Over the past few months, I've seen a lot of posts. There's kind of a rise in interest in overhauling this, and I wasn't really able to get a video out right when people really had it on their minds. But I don't think that means the topic is completely gone and dead. I do think Agreed. people still want resolutions and more ideas here. So I don't want that momentary fervor to just fade away. Please share your and, thoughts uh, ideas knowing and what the you future like to see it hasn't construction or changed in construction. And I will try to work all the ideas into a cohesive this was, thought. Oh, this is three for weeks how ago. Construction okay. works in Planet Side Two. Okay, soldiers, that is it. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. For those that stuck it out all the way to the end, there's a couple little sneaky things we're going to do here. One of them sneaky is going thing. to be a giveaway. The first being oh, a Warriors the giveaway. Anniversary bundle. Yeah, yeah. If you haven't seen this video yet, yes you go yes go do that down in the comments to be entered into that raffle. I think you and just you put Vikings in, right? Oh, look, Rel Appreciate you doing all commented. Good video, Second, serious. To live stream before the like end you designed to describe a lot of struggles. Yeah. Oh, got to sign in to do that. Hello, soldiers. My name so is... So anyways. Nick. All for now, fellow Raxians. It's good. It's really I'm good that Rel responds. I, I think that's cool. I will see you. Planet side. It shows me that he is paying attention. Here's my crazy idea for an overhaul. Okay, I'm listening. The game would improve if we split territory percent between small base and construct space in the hex. You can link multiple construct spaces together for more territory control. Okay. From there. All right, so that is the video. Now let's look over here and see what Rail posted in an upcoming upcoming patch that's going to happen this, this was a week ago he posted this hey there folks in this letter we'll be sharing our intentions for the first major update of 2023 i briefly read this but didn't give much thought to it yet i think you're just i'm reading the chat your people did 7-Eleven. Why are you playing terrorism in the game when you could do it in real life? What are you talking about, man? <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> uh, I don't know what that means. One of our goals for this year is to be more transparent with content we're excited about, which includes letting you know our plans further in advance, showing off more work in progress material. Encouraging more feature testing in the public test server and encouraging engaging in more discussion with you all when possible. Cool. To kick things off below, you'll find an interview of our goals and plan design for a revamped construction system. This should be viewed as somewhat as a conversation starter and you can find a discussion 
to post feedback in here. Where does here go? Oh, the forums. Sure. The, the forums are... Looks like you went way in depth. Huh. How many responses? What is this? This looks cool, whatever this is. Degenetron. Oh, when the highs was a thing, that was cool. That was when you could post silos and they acted like victory points. That was interesting. I, I, I thought that was a cool thing. I've always seen highs as part of phase two of the nanite economy. What What is this? Default nanite distribution map. Oh, this dude shows. Oh my gosh, I need to jack this. Clustering hives, clay, chaining hives. What is this? This is this is cool. So this shows you the rate at which cordium displays on Indar. If you're in Indar, we, and it just pretty, pretty much shows the closer you are to the warp gate, the more there is. That is cool. Looks cool. Lots of three pages worth of responses. So this has a bit more depth to it. But let's keep going. I just want to understand why you aren't terrorizing the US. Why am I not terrorizing the US? I'm from America. My heritage is American. And I've been in the US military for many years. So thank you for watching my stuff and communicating with me. I appreciate that. I don't... What are you... What are you trying to ask me? Yeah. Alright, so construction. What does it... What it does well and what needs work. So it's been leveraged as a way to fill in between spaces of a continent. By providing a low intensity form of gameplay that can be done off the front lines. I have felt that. <laughs> I'm reading the chat. Uh, my answer is a solid no. No, I, I do not anticipate doing that. So yeah. Anyways, by giving players a variety of pieces and control over base layout, each construction fight will be a little bit different. Uh, yep, that is very true. Every almost every base is different just by the nature of the arrangement and how things go work. Increased diversity of play as adds progression for builders. Okay, D construction is difficult to get into. Well, I mean, when you someone did a video not long ago when you first build an account. You have maybe like seven modules, a bunch of walls and stuff. What? No problem. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate you watching. Thank you. So construction is difficult to get into, can be borderline tedious. Look. If you buy the bundle, which is expensive, by the way, you get access to everything, or you can access it via certs. You have access to about seven or eight modules, enough to build a base, a, an okay base. So is it difficult to get into? There's a little bit of a learning curve, more so than just clicking heads and, and shooting people and killing them. That's true. It's a different mechanic in an FPS environment, so it, it can be difficult from that perspective. But it's not particular, particularly challenging. 
Once you understand the mechanics and the limitations of the engine, it's just building. You're just putting stuff down. Can be borderline tedious. Absolutely. It is absolutely tedious. Yeah. The running back and forth from silo to module, putting this down, putting that down. The most tedious part is when you when your base starts to get cluttered with a bunch of modules, it can be very difficult to know where the empty space is. So I'm sitting there for like, I don't know, a good 30 seconds to every minute for every module trying to figure out where does it turn green? Nope, not there, not there, not there. Oh, wait, it flashed green. Let me spin it around a lot. And then, oh, there's a random spot where it's green. Let me just slow that down. And then finally, okay, I hit it green. 30 seconds to a minute when bases get crowded. That's what starts happening. That's the tedious part. Frustrating to fight against as an attacker. I would, I mean, I've attacked a lot of bases. It, it, the only part is frustrating is knowing in which order to kill modules. It's not hard once you figure that out. Attack the shield first with a glaive or an orbital. Then attack the sky shield module. Attack the repair. No, no, no. Excuse me. Attack the towers because they're the most visible. Attack the repair modules so that stuff starts, stops repairing. Attack the attack module. The targeting module is what I meant to say. So that when you rebuild the towers, they're not automatic. Then attack anything you want. Don't attack the walls because that is the that's just like a red herring. It's a distraction. It's a trap. It soaks up a lot of damage. It will eat up a lot of your time. Don't attack the walls. Find a way to shoot over the around beside the walls. Attack the modules. Attack the important structures. Leave the silo for last because that can just that's a tank. So yeah. And frequently creates well developed back and forths. Back back and forth fights. Ooh, the spike is getting to me now. And frequently creates well developed back and forth fights. I buy that. And only recently, with the increase in open field capture points and map support, it was even made capable of adding value to the most common form of map based play. Sure being capturing and defending bases. Okay, so how do we tap the potential good? This almost seven year old system. We're focusing on two main objectives. Allow builders to develop bases that non builders enjoy fighting at. Reduce barrier to entry for players looking to engage with the system. Sure. If we know the first one, everything else kind of falls into place. Allow builders to develop bases that non builders enjoy fighting at. I don't see where you're going there yet, but let's keep reading. Lattice-based construction. One of the more uh, is a deliver. Uh, we'd like to deliver is the conversion of vehicle capture points found at lattice-based construction outposts into slowly but infinitely refilling faction-controlled cording silo. Version of vehicle capture points found at lattice-based construction outposts into slowly but Okay, these special silos will double as the capture point of a base and the heart of one. Go on. No longer will you arrive an open field capture point with nothing to do, like Burgess. Okay. By adding, and that's next to Regent Rock on Endar. By adding a, so, a silo right next to the capture point, there should almost always be a base to fight against. All right. And the ability to construct one without all the initial friction of cordium runs and setup. When the base is captured by an opposing faction, all the resources and range of the silo will flip. When the base is captured by an opposing faction, all of them will flip the cat. Meaning that it may sometimes be better to leave structures standing instead of knocking them over. Yeah. Yeah, some that's that's an extension of of right now when you're attacking bases. What is worth your time and what isn't and usually when you get to destroying everything but the silo the silo isn't even worth your time so okay in general we like more construction objects with interiors that can be used as combat spaces 
community member lore master made some great mock-ups i remember seeing these i really liked them this was cool cool stuff so this is like a big size module that has a repair thing in it yep see so people can be in it let me make that a little bigger bigger base style stuff i think that's cool i think it's very cool it's almost like dugout style models it's a tricky balance because of how difficult placement can be oh yes the placement of a base is tough that is hard to do so if you can if you can nail that part a lot of this will fall into place i think but the goal would be to have interior spaces that especially power okay the elysium spawn tube might be converted into a rebirth center so instead of it being like a tiny little tube probably a more a bigger structure like a bunker i'm, I'm guessing and the orbital strike uplink might be incorporated into a larger structure okay new structures will be added to that serve other niches as well for example command center might have a spawn room cool that's interesting so they're they're trading smaller modules for bigger modules with more stuff in them it's more like uh presets type, type stuff i think that's neat an equipment terminal incorporation within it but also require a larger flatter okay look it's already very hard to find a base with find a construction area with large tracts of flat land very difficult once you start putting down five or six structures i'd say in your seventh or eighth you're you're starting to really f waste time finding little niche spots where you can put new modules down especially on amherst it's probably the the roughest place to build in my opinion endar is okay esamir is got a lot of flat land Hassan has random collision mechanics, like the, the little glowy plants that just messes with the base all the time. So th those are weird mechanics that you have to account for. So it's already kind of hard to find large flat areas, especially when you're building that scale, which is what this is turning into. Rebirth Center, Orbital Strike Uplink turned into a larger structure. You're talking about a lot of large structure places already and that's that's difficult to pull off consistently we like to add more small skill construction uh objects that provide cover while traversing a base tunnels that'd be awesome awnings tree stand like platforms cool that's that's cool i like that idea modules reworked corium longer passively drains bases on modules you have scattered around the base interesting revamping modules to move toward an active form of base upkeep in this updated version modules are pulled from a silo and placed into the socket of a construct of a structure so it sounds like you're just like you build a silo and then start building off of the silo that's an interesting change module provides a benefit to the structure and it will stay powered until the module runs dry after that a new module so instead of the silo feed and everything it sounds like modules will have individual health lifespans interesting a bunker might have two module sockets and be able to accept different modules oh so instead of a module like a repair module affecting everything in its radius it sounds like it's going to be very discreet for one module affecting one facility I don't know. I like to see that in practice before I try and pass judgment on it. A heavy repair module might last for a short direction, for shorter duration, but have a greater impact. Okay. We refer to these modules as high pressure. They're meant to be inserted when combat heats up. Thing is about that, it's very tough, in my opinion, as a construction person, to react to pressure. It comes on so fast that your ability the the build the module placement is is tedious as previously mentioned by rail the uptime or the, the downtime so the building uh, it takes a while it takes like 30 seconds to 45 seconds for something to build that's a lot of time in in first person shooter worlds so 
when the combat heats up, you have to see it coming before it gets to you for you to be effectively prepared for it. Otherwise, you need another builder to kind of react in real time. That's hard to do. Most of my builds are by myself, even when I'm asking for help. So I don't know how that's going to turn out, but let's see how it works. Players will be given an active role in maintaining the health of a base by sliding in new modules when needed. I'd like to see what that looks like in practice. If that's just me sitting there restocking a module when it dies, how different is that going to be than what I'm doing already with Cordium in a silo? So instead of one thing I'm restocking, I'm restocking 17 things? I, I don't fully understand how that's work going to work out. Newly formed bases won't be difficult to get going. It's not obvious to me from this explanation why that's true. On account of removal of Cordium Drain, that's not the reason why bases are difficult to get going. You already get 2,000 Cordium per pull when you build a silo. So that, that will last you a, a, a good while if you're not building fast. And for a new builder, you're not building fast. So the Cordium Drain is not the problem. That only happens when you're at like module number 15, 20. That's when the drain gets really intense. Up until that point, you have time. I don't feel like Cordium Drain is the issue here. And the drain on Cordium will only need to take place when a base is in a combat area? So you're saying the Cordium won't happen, the Cordium Drain won't happen when I'm outside of combat, so like a contested region? So you won't need to do Cordium runs to maintain bases that aren't chat. That's, it's cool, okay. Attacking individuals can also be done with the help of modules. Go on. If an enemy breaches the interior of a structure, they can destroy any socket module within the object, replacing it with a cordium bomb. The revamped cordium bomb will no longer be able to be placed on out in the open and will instead act like a module that attackers have access to. It's a pretty radical change, but I'm open to it. Still held in the tactical slot, a cordium bomb must be defended until it explodes. It's kind of an odd mechanic. It sounds like an odd mechanic at least, but sure. Okay. Finding the fun in attacking construction. The flow of construction is a bit different. Defender attempts to build the most impenetrable base they can. True, because it takes a long time, by the way. Either to protect a capture point or create an impassable object. That right there is a, is a game mechanic. It's an optimization of what's available. We don't, a lot of fobs are difficult to maintain without help. Most of the time, construction players don't have help. So you see a lot less fewer forward operating bases. So the defending construction player will attempt to build further back or build a place they think they have enough time to build something close to Helm's Deep. Unless you're working as a team, which why I used to do a lot as Devil Dogs, I could build fobs in that case because I knew where the battle lines were. I knew where our forces were. I could ask for help. But when that doesn't, isn't available and you're building by yourself, you don't have that luxury. You can be attacked at any time and you often are. So it's it's not quite so intuitive for a player to build closer to the front line you generally are risk i think construction players are generally more risk averse because it takes so much time to get that ant to get that cordium to plant find a site it's just it takes a while the goal is to stop the enemy from spawning there to get through the obstacle this methodology is more similar to the rush game mode than the control one okay control is a tug of war whereas rush is one and done attrition based construction operates similarly once the heart of a base is destroyed the rest of the base is just debris okay for this reason the fun of construction needs to be in the approach 
and overcoming obstacles as you work toward a heavily guarded center. Some unfun mechanics may make it difficult to really enjoy the core of the combat experience, which is vehicle and infantry play. I don't feel like bases are particularly unfun against vehicles. And for infantry who know what they're doing, if you're operating in teams, again, take out the towers first. That's your first order business. Vehicles already do it. It doesn't take a lot to down a tower. I can do it myself in under a minute, just over a minute with AP. So with the update, the intention would be to convert non skywall shields to two way shields. Oh, that's a bummer. In which structures have access to them and how they use them. Remove the pain spire. Okay. Remove the automated turrets. That's interesting. If they remove automated stuff, it's going to be much harder for me to be a base builder. Only because automation removes barriers to me doing stuff. And, and it already, it, I already have a lot to deal with as a construction player. So automation just makes it to where I can focus more on building. Take that away and then I'm, I'm a little bit in trouble when it comes to that. Remove EMP effects from sky walls. Increase overall resilience of larger bases by increasing defensibility. Okay. There are a few moments when construction is introduced. Yep, that's true. Very few times is introduced to a player. They just kind of see a base and like, how do I do that? And then, I don't know, they just kind of have to figure it out for themselves. Training mission. That'd be cool. Leveraging the campaign system. That's cool. Reducing the overall unlock cost. It's... Someone did a video on this, and, and I'll lean on them, but the the cost was like 10,000 search or 15,000. It, it, it was pretty reasonable in my mind when it came to how many modules are already unlocked. Standing base kits. Sure. How are we seeing the ant? Which more do we have to go here? Oh, not too far. We'll be taking a pass on the amount of cordium nodes on each map to ensure there's enough to go around. Okay. Integrate the ants max rank mineral and cordium capacities by default. All right. I always thought that was kind of like a cool little. Here's a cookie for putting in for it, but whatever. Cordium nodes themselves are also going to be changed to make the experience left, left click and wait. It is a lot of left click and wait. You can you can reduce the left click and wait by attaching the the miner as the secondary and then just switching between the two when using a howler. But you know it is it's still left click and wait. We'd like to convert harvesting tools like the mandibles into more traditional short range weapon that can ship pieces of cordium nodes away. These pieces would then be driven over to collect. Like Minecraft? The intention would make these nodes change shape as they fall apart, allowing you to clearly see how much cordium is available from a distance. That's interesting. From a distance, I can't tell how much cordium is, but that's generally not a big deal for me as an ant driver. It, it's just... Once I find one, it's like, ah, okay, I'll move on to the next. A little bit annoying, but not overly. Not so much so that you would want to change it into like a minecraft system where like there's little little sprites that pop up when you mine something you have to like walk over it that just takes more time at that point more distance between me and building the base mandibles will deal heavy deal damage to cordium reasonable damage to anti-construction vehicles and light damage to everything else what is an anti-construction vehicle oh reasonable damage as anti-construction so it would do reasonable damage to other construction modules okay the orbital mining drill is planned is planned to make a comeback as a war asset that outfits can summon to the battlefield the drill would the drill would churn up cordium that could be then collected to help summon the base that's neat i'd like to see that come i, I don't think i've ever used that Quality of life. A lot of QOL improvements. 
slowing down the default rotation rate. Yeah. Although, when you get to be build, build bigger bases and space becomes a commodity, the faster rates helps me build faster because I can find the, the green space closer because uh, I'm moving around all the time trying to find like what space works. So when it's spinning around really fast, I can see like a flash of green and know that I found the right spot. So slowing it down, please don't slow it down too much. Otherwise, I'm going to be sitting there all day looking left, right, going forward, going back, trying to find that one random spot that fits green for a module. Turning the color building socket spheres into upward and downward arrows. Okay. Showing the placement controls on screen while holding a construction object. I don't know what that means. Making it easier to read the ants mining HUD. Don't know what that means. Surfacing podium capacity in third person. Don't know what that means. Having heavy an easier piece to place to see and unlock construction objects. Don't know what that means. Making it easier to un unlock construction objects in general. Okay. Showing the nearly f nearest friendly silo on your HUD while you're in an ant. Yes, please. That could be difficult. It can take a while before I see another friendly HUD silo. Showing allied silos on the map in general. Please. Yes, thank you. That can be tough. Because I can't see it on the map. So I have to like drive around just to find one. Um, yeah, showing which terminal types a construction base has access to on the redeploy screen. I don't know what that means. Expandable buildable areas where possible and the list goes on. Cool. That's cool. Odds and ends. Clean up and balance. Orbital strikes won't be able to, to click a base away anymore. Oh, because when you hit the first orbital strike, the sky shield will go down. Second orbital strike will kill a lot of the modules, but it doesn't kill a lot of the actual bigger stuff. Like it doesn't kill the silo, doesn't kill a garage, doesn't kill. I mean, it'll kill the repair AI. I like the little little modules, but that seems pretty reasonable to me. All right, damage will be reduced against construction objects. Okay, targeting glide device for flail glaive or it will be converted to a laze system. It requires the user to remain exposed with eyes on target for a time before the strike is confirmed. Oh. So no more like fire and forget and fire and for just. You have to like lay. I, I support that. The targeting blips that you have to continue like shoot to adjust fire. That can be somewhat frustrating to deal with. So a laze system would be cool. More counterplay. Yeah. Generate port generate points toward empire strength yep the hives i thought that was cool i wasn't much of a construction player at that time so i'm assuming that that's when construction came out you'll probably also remember how abruptly and out of nowhere a content would capture because of yeah i do remember that it would be like 70 percent captured but like what it just started like five seconds ago if that's somewhat more similar to Empire Strength nowadays, where it points lead toward alert firing. Hey, okay. Map closure, it may be a different situation. Something I consider the weakest portion of the current proposed design zone is the rate of alerts. Firing on continents at the moment is pretty high. Yes. And includes population triggered alerts. Yeah. Whether or not we have too many or too few alerts seems to be an opinion that oscillates back and forth over the years. Based on your feedback about this point in the game. Alerts seem to be just firing off enough that they seem to be in an okay place. Not every 30 minutes and not every five days, I think, like it used to be. So it's somewhere like alert or two a day. So like every six hours, every 12 hours. That seems pretty fine. Nothing wrong with that. Plenty more. A large multi multi initiative, you still see plenty of bug cleanup. QOL. Prime gaming content, clutch move. Well done. Well done for securing that. I didn't think about that when I was when I was posting my CM ideas, but absolutely awesome. Well done. 
good good eyeballs that get put on the game because of that so yeah overall i'm i'm optimistic well i'm very optimistic about what you have planned i'm looking forward to testing it out see how it works out could be way better we'll see and yeah i think that's the point is is trying something new so i hope that comes with smaller no deploy zones if it does then i think you'll see construction players are much more relevant yeah even if it's just defense modules non-offensive modules yeah i'm gonna go ahead and do a so we're, we're gonna move on to to zealous here i'm only clocking in an hour and 15 so that that's fine i haven't seen this one yet i'm gonna do a brief intermission and then i'll be back Okay, here we are. So we just read Rel's, Rel's thing, and I like where he's headed with it. Rel, I, if you're watching, I think that this is a very interesting idea. has the potential to refresh a lot of what we, we know and what we've been used to. I'm looking forward to it. I think that's cool. Some things that may or may not work based on experience. It, it just looks like some things start from a, a, a assumption that may not be true. But I'm I'm all for trying it. Let's see how it works. All right, now that we've done that, let's look at Zealous's response to Rel, which was six days ago. So on 18th, so a day after Rel posted this, Zealous posted this. So let's see what he has to say. I haven't watched this one yet. Let's just go ahead and give him a little toke there. Oh, and I can't like it because I'm not signed in. Oops. All right, let's do it. Okay, so Will has gone ahead and announced that construction is going to have a massive rework. He's essentially outlined what he would like to do with construction, and we'll get to that in a minute, but there's some more pressing things within this to mention. The main reason why I was critical for Rel nothing construction last time was because he didn't in reason why I was critical for Rel nothing construction last time was because he didn't give it anything else as like a supplement. Basically, there was no trade in terms of value. It was a net negative for construction players initially with what Rail wanted to do a few months ago. My big problem with what Rail seems to have posted before we get into the granular details is that he isn't making construction more relevant. 
There's no reason that you would actually go to these construction bases other than the vehicle bases that they're essentially turning into like a faction specific Cortium silo that ev Maybe. I didn't see anywhere where he planned on reducing the node deploy zones, so the node deploy zones, which are already massive as is. Uh, if that's true, if Rail has no intention of reducing node deploy zones, then sure. Why, why would a change of Cordium distribution and module placement change people wanting to fight at a base instead of just going around it? I don't know the answer to that. I'm not sure everyone owns you know maybe that will have some relevancy and maybe people will go there maybe i have my doubts about that as well but if we even if we concede that people are going to go to the faction specific courtium silos and build construction bases and there's going to be some interaction there it doesn't change construction in general just being considered quite irrelevant because they're kind of relegated to the outskirts of the fight something to I see agree. at a distance and kind of look at merely something to be used for the aircraft terminals for routers for an orbital strike for a flail essentially just for utility there's no actual fight though going on at these bases and if there ever is it's a massive no actual fight though for an orbital strike for a flail essentially just for utility there's no action actual fight though going on at these bases and if there ever is, it's a massive overpop vehicles are just barreling down and killing the entire base. Also, I agree with that. A lot of times, a random Zerg will just show up and start decimating my base. That's basically where construction is. What I thought Rail was going to do, and what I thought would have been a really smart move, is kind of make construction something where the spawn tubes act as basically a replacement for Sunderers, at least on some of the bases. So say half of the bases on, say, two of the continents as an experiment, they allow construction bases to be built far closer to the infantry place bases, basically in the same kind of area yep. as Sunderers. And that would solve part of the issue that we're having with Planet Side 2, with the constructions getting killed quite quickly, and yep. the logistics running out when the fight being over, and then everyone yep. just join combats onto the middle fight, which is kind of a shame because that isn't very yeah. Planet Side esque. You want these fights to last more than two minutes at a time if you can, but again, the Sunderers normally get killed. So having construction as kind of a logistics hub, and people have to push into that construction base, and you make it less aids for infantry players by removing the pain spares and removing the anti-infantry tires. I thought that would be smart. I thought that would be what Rail would do. However, what the mad lad seems to be focusing on, and this is crazy, is a bunch of dev resources into adding new assets for construction, which sound cool, fixing a bunch of quality of life features and UI things for uh, construction players, which again is nice, but it doesn't fix the actual core fundamental issue with construction. Again, with that being... I don't feel so pessimistic as, as Zella seems to come off here. I'm optimistic about the changes. I do completely agree though that that not allowing it not allowing us to build defensive modules closer to you no know, deploy or to do infantry fights on bases is a big irrelevancy factor for us. It relegated to the outskirts of fights where yeah. it's basically irrelevant. And look that sucks to even say yep. because I would love construction to be relevant. Me I too. Think that it should be relevant, but right now it just doesn't seem to be working that way. Vel did also say that True. he's toying with the idea of making construction bases tied to the Empire strength or something. So basically, used to be like the hives. amount of silos contributes to the alert starting or something crazy like that. Now, look, if we're being honest, that's not going to motivate people to build an entire construction base. Maybe build a silo to to help if they want to start an alert. But that's about. I don't know. It it gives me another reason to build a base is if I know it contributes to the alert. It's not going to make construction more relevant. Likewise, if you were to type... Hives did. That's the reason why Hives were so... Well, that, that's the reason why Empire's one alert so quickly was because high, people took Hives seriously. It, it, it was overkill, but it, it worked. Construction to a slight infantry buff where people have a passive HP regen after five seconds of not taking damage for the attackers it was like a passive vehicle discount instead of it being tied to war assets okay. say it was something crazy like that i still don't think it would have a big impact i still think people would generally ignore it even if they tied construction to a last and they were to say 
you know, you get 5% extra territory percentage if you control construction bases on contested territories where there's an opposition force and an allied force kind of meeting in the middle. If there's a silo there, you know, it counts towards territory. Again, I don't think it would have a massive impact. I don't think people would be like, oh, let's go kill these 10 construction bases in a row for our gameplay for the for the night. You know, that's how we do it ops of the day. I just don't think it's going to happen. It's not something people are going to want to do. The entire reason that infantry players were pushing for automated turrets and pain spires to be removed was to make construction more relevant and allow people to then fight over those bases without it being aid. At least I think that's what Sirius was generally pushing for. Another change fight over those bases without it being aid. At least I think that's what Sirius was generally pushing for. Another change that I'm really surprised to see is that if they want to make these construction bases more relevant, you're going to need a way for the opposition to get into the construction base. So I was thinking one every two or one every three wars would have to have a mandatory doorway in it. And that would have a two-way shield mandatory doorway it wouldn't be so big of a deal if there was a like like right now you have a max wall count if one of the walls had a doorway in the in the very middle of them all right but then what you're going to get into is multiple construction players going to get together and just build the walls that don't have doorways and max that out and just leave that as, as and because you have two you have double the amount of max walls without doorways I think that's what's going to end up happening, but okay, point taken. ...or something, and that was kind of how you could get in and out of the base. And again, that doesn't seem to be where Vel is heading, which is a big issue. Because now, even if you do make these bases relevant, Finchy can't even get into that base, they're just stuck looking at the walls. Kind of changed my mind. I don't know about that. And over the last month that maybe it isn't an awful idea if the devs do put time into niche things right some people really like air to air some people really like vehicles like uh, lightnings or whatever some people really like maxes whatever some people really like nso the point is that putting time into niche things that only one percent of the player base will use isn't necessarily an awful thing and so for example construction or even outfit wars having something that only five percent of the player base is going to use maybe one percent for construction you know, to be fair, it isn't necessarily as bad of an investment of time. So people have been complaining that it isn't worth it because of the amount of construction players that there are, you know, makes it not worth it. But again, if other people are also interacting with the construction base that don't build it, if you're having good infantry fights on that base, again, that could make it worth it. I think that there is some potential there for construction bases to replace Thunderers to some degree on some bases, again, on say one continent or the two continents, see how that works for a month for two weeks and then if it doesn't work take it back out and that would be really i think how you would make construction more relevant the way that devs seem to be approaching construction right now is add a bunch of shiny things with no motivation for people to actually go there and fight in those spaces again other than to armor zargit down with a bunch of vehicles which is very easy i've done it ten thousand times there's even more degenerate ways that you'll be able to do it now because all you all you have to do now the automated turrets are going to be removed including by the way from the sounds of it automated anti-air turrets which is crazy by the way because that was a nice kind of way for air mains to go repair i think i think they liked it for that and basically you wouldn't get killed whilst you were repairing your aircraft which was nice um irrespective of that now you can just drop 24 infantry players onto the base with decimators and c4 and you can just blow up the modules and take over the base Again, that's mm -hmm. even more easy than it was previously with the old yep. construction system, where you at least had pain spares that you could put around the base and you could put an automated turret in the middle. To me, it seems yep. like the construction players won't realize it yet, <laughs> and they might not for a few months, but it feels like they're getting shafted, but at the same time being given some shiny new things and some, kind of like some attention, um, and like, oh, we're getting this attention, this is great. But the stuff that they're going to add is actually not comparable to the things that the devs are taking away. Now ironically, in almost bigger news, the devs are also going to be adding in remote vehicle deploy from the map like it used to be. This is really important for two main reasons. First off, Valkyries was something that people used to get to new bases quite regularly, and taking that out was ridiculous. Because air, air mains, right, aircraft the rest of that. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of vehicle remote pools anymore. Now that they've taken it out, I feel I've had the conversation on Reddit. I feel like I'm more immersed in the gameplay of Planet Side Two with the remote deploy 
taken out. And this is coming from someone who Vanguard mains all the time. Most of my time is spent in a Vanguard. So, yeah, I, I don't believe that. I don't believe that remote deploy is a good add back in. I'm glad that he took it out. And I used to love vehicle remote deploy before he took it out. Then when I took it out, it felt like closer to old plant side. And taking that out was ridiculous because air, air mains, aircraft mains, air to ground players would still use the air terminals from construction bases that you would usually be on the kind of the middle of the map. So they weren't affected. But if a base wasn't close to a tower base or like um, Howling Pass or whatever, where you could pull at Valkyrie very easily, oftentimes those bases wouldn't have as many fights because it was just harder to get to those fights. You know, nobody in the right mind is going to bother to pull an aircraft from an amp station or from a tech plant or from a bio labs or from Vanu archives or one of those other bases people don't even know you can pull aircraft from because they came to the game after the remote uh, pulling of aircraft thing was taken out and they just don't realize uh, because they're kind of new players and um, yeah like I, I just don't think that that was good for gameplay I think they play a margin behavior that makes quality of life um, improvements taking those out is just a bit crazy to me I also think it's pretty crazy right now that you can get an air to ground ESF for 100 nanites if you've got an aircraft discount on the base and you've got ASP discount and then on top of that you've got the OSHA discount which usually our faction will usually have a value at least and you know that's just 100 nanites for an aircraft that's insane you can pull by the time you had run out of nanites um, with air to ground ESFs you could have pulled, you know, one aircraft a minute for 10 minutes straight, assuming you get, you're getting like uh, 50 nanites back a minute. So obviously something needs to be done about air to ground ESFs. And, and if you remember, 75 well did make the remote deploy thing not a thing anymore, but it clearly wasn't having the impact that they wanted. And it's great to see the devs kind of roll back on this change. With the last patch, we saw something similar. The devs quietly at the end of the patch notes, and I barely mentioned this, they made OSHA essentially start an alert at 600 pop compared to the other continents at 750, which means people aren't forced to play on it as much, which is a nice quiet admittance from the devs that people don't want to play on OSHA that much. Right? There hasn't been a prime time PS2 alert, OSHA alert in I think two or three months now. So the fact that they're kind of acknowledging that a bit and making it easier for people not to go on OSHA is nice. Again, I'd rather OSHA be something that people play on Sundays only. It happens at the end of the month on the membership weekend. People saying delete OSHA. You know, I kind of understand the sentiment, but let's be reasonable here. Again, leaving it as something for membership weekend, I think would be a reasonable compromise. And people might be excited to play on OSHA if it's something that happens once a month, one day a month. I think that could be fun. Within the construction post, there was a lot of rhetoric and kind of explaining the reasons for stuff, which is nice and it adds flavor to the post. But I think in terms of like pure mechanical stuff, I've talked about a lot of the stuff that they're gonna to add to construction, they're gonna add in some extra new facilities essentially, where like instead of it being a module, it would be a building, which is kind of like an interesting thing. I don't think it's particularly necessarily even a good idea because now you're gonna need more surface area to defend a construction base, which means you're gonna need more wars. And if they don't increase the amount of wars you can place, it's gonna kind of just make construction ironically probably worse. But again, a lot of construction means won't realize that for a few months. So people right now probably are okay with it. They're also making um, harvesting Cortium a bit easier with essentially Are they having though? new players be able to have the uh, mineral radar for Cortium unlocked at maximum level by default and the capacity that your ant can hold Cortium to increase That's from 8, cool. 000, having 10, a larger capacity is good. That Which helps. Is nice. It is a shame that the devs are only doing that as a decrease to the barrier of entry of construction. It does seem a bit interesting to me that, you know, it costs 3,500 SARS to unlock some of the construction stuff. You know, that's a bit insane. The devs also seem to be nerfing modules essentially and making them only placeable inside of these prefabricated buildings. So say, for example, instead of a spawn yeah. tube, you now have a respawn center, a respawn room, um, and maybe you can place some modules in there. Uh, but the problem is then the modules only affect that one building. They don't affect other adjacent buildings or an area of effects like they currently right. do. So again, I talked about that already. To construction. That again, construction players probably won't realize for a few months because people like to go into things Why do you keep with saying like that? a bunch of hopium or perhaps copium, depending on how you want to frame it. And um, yeah, I just don't think that 
each making modules only apply to the building that you're specifically in. Again, it's a good thing. I think it's another knock to construction. Now, I could be wrong on some of this. I would be interested in hearing your thoughts and feelings in the comment section, so feel free to post those. I encourage you to like the video on my last one. A bunch of people forgot to like the video, but it was at like 100% likes, it's just people forgot. So if people would remember this time to like the video, that would be appreciated. And again, subscribing does okay. help the channel so much as well. You have I'll no like idea. it. Thank you so much for subscribing. Have a wonderful week. It's been Gigi. a pleasure. I'm out. Gigi. Bye bye. <laughs> cool. All right. So he and I agreed on, on some things there that I already talked about. Coolio. Okay. So, so that will end the the reacts I had. I reacted to Sirius, then Rel, then Zealous. And then I, as I saw in, in the right hand side, it looks like Kami came out with a video as well. I'm assuming the priorities mentioned in the title means also construction, but I'm going to end it there. Good react. I, I liked, I like where it's going. We'll see how it turns out in real life. In the actual, I'm interested to see what it actually turns into in game. That to me will be the test of time instead of you know, pontificating or guessing about what it's going to be right now. It's just my initial reaction based on playing the game. So yeah, I think also this doubling as a, a test case for my next draft site coming up, which will be Western Tech on Saturday and then Deeg on Monday. So I'm looking forward to both of those things. Thank you all for your time and that'll end it for today.